الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين as i told you in the introductory lecture we are now beginning with the first grouping of the surahs the bakki surah wa surah al fatiha which we have already studied now the madani part of this first group consists of four surahs and consisting of two pairs of two surahs each surah al baqara surah al imran they are a pair and that is evident from the fact that both start with the letters alif lam mim then surah al nisa surah al maida they are a pair they start straight off ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ya ayyuhan nas this is how surah al nisa and surah al maida start so this is the first pair of the madani surahs now regarding surah al baqara please note This is the largest and the biggest surah of the Quran. It comprises nearly two and a half parts. It has 286 ayat divided into 40 rukus. And this surah al-Mubarakah not only regarding its size is one of the most important surahs of the Quran, rather I should say the most important surah of the Quran because it has been said so by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself in the hadith in which he said li kulli shay'in salam wa salam salam alquran surah albaqarah everything has its top highest place and we will say every phenomenon has a climax and the top or the climax of quran is surah albaqarah Now these are the wordings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This surah, I have given it a name, Surah al-Ummatain, Surah of Two Ummas. The two Ummas, that is the present Muslim Ummah, that is the Muslims, and the former Muslim Ummah, the Bani Israel. This surah can be divided, just as we. Listen to the Hadith of Qudsi. Asham tu salat a baini wa baina abdi nisfain. Surah Al Fatiha divisible into two absolutely equal parts. Here again we have nearly equal parts, halves of Surah Al Baqarah. First part that comprises of 18 rukus and 152 ayat. Here the address is basically. to the former muslim ummah that is bani israel out of the 18 rukus more than 10 you know they are in direct address ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa afu bi ahdi yuf bi ahdikum wa ya ya farhabun this is the beginning of the fifth section fifth ruku of this surah and in the 15th section again ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala alamin It's a continuous address to the former Muslim Ummah. In the first four 
glucose, they are some preliminary discussions, and as we shall see, inshallah, very soon, actually they are a summary of the whole of the Makki Quran. Because two thirds of the Quran had been revealed already when Surah Al Baqarah was being revealed. It is Madani Surah. And this is the first Madani Surah. The time of its revelation is beginning with the Hijra till the time just before Ghazmatul Badr. So that is actually about 16 or 17 months. This Surah was revealed bit by bit, part by part, during 16 or 17 months, extending from just after Hijra to just before Qadmatul Badr, the Battle of Badr. So this is the first Badri Surah that way. But two-thirds of the Qur'an had already been revealed. That is the Makki Surahs. So actually, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this Surah in the very beginning of the Qur'an, a gist and a summary of the teachings of the Makki Qur'an is given in four rukus in the very beginning of this surah. Then the four remaining rukus of this first part, they are tahwili, because you will find that the change in the direction of Tibla from Jerusalem to Makkah, that is discussed in those four rukus. And that was actually a symbol that the position that was held by the former Muslim Ummah, Bani Israel, for 2,000 years, now they are deposed from that position. They were the representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth for 2,000 long years. Now they are deposed, and the new Muslim Ummah, based on the prophethood of and messengerhood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now this has taken the place, this, sur, this, this new Ummah. It is being installed in place of the former Muslim Ummah. That is why the direction of the Qibla that is changed from Jerusalem to Makkah. Then the second part, second half of this surah, it comprises of 22 rukus, but the number of ayat is 134. In the first part, 18 rukus, but ayat 152. In the second half, although the rukus number is greater, 22, but the number of the ayat 134. So actually they go to balance each other, and that is how I am saying that they nearly balanced half, half and half, you know. The, this division is nearly balanced. In that second portion, the address is to the Muslim Ummah exclusively. And two subjects are being discussed. Number one, the Sharia, because the Sharia is revealed after Hijrah. Before Hijrah, there was no Sharia actually, no law. Nothing had been made first except, you know, Salah. And that was also made first only a year or so before Hijrah. There was no Zakah, there was no Psalm. There was, nothing was declared haram. You know, neither you know, liquor was declared haram, nor interest was declared haram. No Sharia. So Sharia actually was revealed in the Madani Surahs. And in Surah Al-Baqarah we find the blueprint, the basic principle, the blueprint of the Sharia of Muhammad Wasallam. And this goes to develop into Surah Al-Nisa, and then final actually, final Sharia has taken the form, the Sharia of Muhammad Wasallam in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So actually the legal the legal injunctions of the Qur'an, and secondly, jihad fi sabirillah, infaq fi sabirillah, tetal fi sabirillah. These are the two subjects discussed in the second half of this surah, and there it's the address to the present Muslim Ummah. Now with this introduction, brief introduction, we start. The first two rukus of this surah are very important. If we keep it view, as I told you, tawilul khas, when they were revealed, what was meant and what was understood basically by these wordings, by these ayat, when they were revealed at that time. And then we shall have the generalized view that if we just leaving away the, the historical background, if we, if we focus our attention on the wordings, then the generalized inferences, then we shall discuss about them. Alif Lam Meem. These are the isolated letters of the Qur'an which appear in the beginning of 29 surahs of the Qur'an. In three surahs only single letter comes. Qaf, Noon, Qaf wal Qur'an al-Majid, Noon wal Qalam wa ma yasturun, Saad wal Qur'an al-Zizikr, 
then in some there are two letters ha mim pa ha ya sin in some there are three letters alif lam mim alif lam ra and in some there are four letters alif lam mim ra alif lam mim sad and only two there are five kaf ha ya ain sad ha mim ain sin kaf and the meanings of these letters nobody knows they are a secret between allah and his messenger although much has been said about these letters but the consensus general consensus is that nobody knows the real meanings with sure there are certain judgments people have guess something but nothing definite you can't be sure of those meanings zalikal kitab la raib fi this is the book of allah al kitab this is the book what does it mean the book of allah la raib fi there's no doubt in it no doubt in it about it's being revealed by allah subhanahu wa taala then there is no doubt in its contents its contents are also above doubt and its revelation from allah subhanahu wa taala is also above doubt hudal lil muttaqin this is the guidance for the god fearing but i discuss this word taqwa in my sunday lecture taqwa you know although generally piety godliness holiness different words are used but actually meanings are to save yourself muttaqin people who want to save themselves since as what from what from the fire of hell number 1 displeasure of allah number 2 and basically they have a moral sense within them and they want to avoid and save themselves from evil if this moral sense is active within them then actually they will always be in search of the truth in search of what we shall do those people who had given those you know who had prayed to allah subhanahu wa taala is the nasirat al mustaqim sirat al ladina anamta alaihim it was their desire it was their own search they wanted to have the guidance now actually this is the relationship between surah al fatiha and surah al baqara you ask for guidance hudal lil muttaqin this is the guidance the guidance is being given to you and they are the doors and do's do these things and don't do these things go this way don't go this way there is danger this way this is the safety this way you are safe so actually this guidance is given here hudal lil muttaqin but as i discussed in that lecture although we find in the 23rd section of this very sura hudal lin nas this has the guidance for all humanity but you know only those people will be able to avail of his guidance who have in themselves the search for truth and guidance who want to have guidance people do who don't want to have any guidance they will not be able to avail themselves of the guidance that quran is giving if somebody is not hungry he will not you know look towards any food this that food might be very nourishing and very tasty but he has no hunger he can't take it so actually there should be a hunger then only you know what food is and how valuable it is how much i need it that is actually the need for guidance is taqwa because you want to save yourself from going astray you want to save yourself from evils you want to save from self from doom on the doom's day if that desire is there only then you will be able to avail of the guidance of the quran and who are those muttaqin alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib those who believe in the unseen who know that the reality lies beyond the realm of our senses our senses you know they are very limited and the real the all the basic realities they lie beyond just as confucius you know the very famous thinker of china he has been reported to have said there's nothing more real than what cannot be seen and that, that there is nothing more certain than what cannot be heard things which are not visible by three, these eyes which cannot be heard through these ears they are the most real things actually what we have this within the realm of our senses this is a very shallow superficial part of reality so this is the basic thing that if somebody he denies no there's nothing beyond our perception then he will not be able to avail of the guidance of this quran only such a person who understand who knows that our senses these you know they can reach 
but to very to a very li- limited extent the reality lies beyond it yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna as-salah and then they establish prayers because that reality the al-haq allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now you should have some contact with him some communication with him and to have a regular communication with him you must establish prayers wa bimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and whatsoever we have given them they spend out of it spend out for charity for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the for the spreading of the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making the deen of allah supreme wal ladhina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik and those who believe in what has been revealed and sent down to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not only you but they believe also on what was sent before they believe in torah also they believe in injil also they believe in zabur also and they believe that the prophets have been given these revelations and guidances before quran also wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun here you know we find the word is changed not you menun but you can know about the hereafter they are convinced they are sure they are sure that this life is not all human life the real human life is in the hereafter death is not the end of our existence it's just the gate towards the eternity because after death you know there is going to be resurrection and after that resurrection by nahala jannatul abada aw la narun abada it's eternity eternal existence so actually death is the gate to eternity actually they have they are, they are convinced they have the yaqeen wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim this ala is very important here these are the people who are on the guidance from their lord they are already on the guidance and they will be increased in their guidance but they are already in the guidance wa ulaika hum al mufihun and they are the people who will be successful who will reach their final goal that is falah now please note here what these ayat denote is that because quran was being revealed for last 12 years before the revelation of these ayat there were people who had taken the guidance of quran they were transformed their characters their sira they have been you know and they were practically present these ayat are practically pointing towards those people they are the people there is abu bakr so look to him he is the fruit of this quran you know every every tree is known by the fruit it bears the guidance of this quran has produced a, a jamaah a group a community of people like abu bakr umar usman talha zubair go and see they are the people who have benefited themselves with the guidance from the guidance of this quran and the quran you know has produced a certain community who have these characters alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib wal yuqimuna as-salah wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun wal ladhina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun so this is actually the tawilul khas when these ayat were revealed as if these ayat were pointing towards the people who muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had prepared by the hard work of 12 years their training their tazkiya their tarbiya and through this the teaching of this quran yu'allimuhumul kitab wal hikmah the teaching of this quran and hikmah has produced it a people a community and these are these people who whose qualities and attributes are given here but if you infer generally what will be the inference if anybody wants actually to avail of the guidance of the quran he must take to this path first he must produce in himself the qualities that are being given here as if they are the precondition to avail the guidance of the quran if you want to tread on the path that quran wants you to tread these are the fundamental conditions rather we should say preconditions that you have to fulfill in order to avail yourself fully with the guidance of the quran now the second group three types of people are discussed in these two rukus second 
ان الذين كفروا سباون عليه ما انذرتهم ام لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى ابصارهم غشاوه ولهم عذاب عظيم verily those people who have denied who have decided to be kuffar to deny سباون عليه for them it's equal anzartahum whether you 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 warn them am lam tunzirhum or you don't warn them la yumilun they are not going to believe now actually here also quran is pointing towards certain people this is not general so many people were kuffar had not become muslims till these ayat were revealed and they became muslims later on so it cannot be a generalized meaning actually it's a particular group those people whom muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had preached for 12 years at makka and they had understood the message of the quran and from the depths of their heart they believed that this is correct but they didn't want to accept it due to their haughtiness due to their takabbur due to their ghurur because you know they were proud they didn't want to follow muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why should we follow muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are we inferior to muhammad no then you know this is actually when they had decided oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is equal it's equally fruitless or equally without any result whether you preach them any more whether you go on warm, warming warming them any more or you stop preaching to them or and warning them la you may know they are not going to believe they have decided to remain kafir they will not accept you khatam allah ala qulubihim allah subhanahu wa taala has put a seal on their hearts wa ala samihim and on their ears they are hearing wa ala absarihim gishawa and on their eyes there is a curtain there is covering on their eyes wa lahum azabun azim and for them is waiting a very big torment now this again please note those people to whom preaching was done the message of quran had been conveyed to them year after year 12 years muhammad took sallallahu alaihi wasallam at makkah abu jahal abu lahab it is not that they didn't, they didn't understand they understood quran was in their own language and they knew muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the very birth abu lahab at least knew him from his very birth but you know they had decided not to accept him due to their haughtiness their proudness so actually now such people they will not avail of your guidance they will not avail of the guidance of the quran they will not benefit o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from your preaching from your warning so it's equal to them and because due to their refusal to accept the truth allah subhanahu wa taala had punished them by putting a seal on their hearts this seal is not in the beginning this seal is put only when somebody refrains from accepting the truth recognizing the truth that this is true his heart tells him this is true accept it and he doesn't accept why because of proudness or because of certain such reasons haughtiness then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a, as a punishment puts his seal on his heart now he cannot see because there is a curtain before their eyes they cannot hear because their hearing is also sealed and now their hearts are closed to for any guidance wa min an-nas now the third degree third type of people wa min an-nas man yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawm al-akhir wa ma hum bi-mu'minin and there are from among people who say with their tongues with their mouths amanna billah we believe in allah wa bil yawm al-akhir and the last day the day of judgment wa ma hum bi-mu'minin and they are not mu'min they are not real believers they profess to believe they claim to believe they say with loud words we believe in allah we believe in the hereafter in the day of judgment but they are not believers now who are they first of all please note they are actually two categories who are being referred here without giving them any name allah subhanahu wa taala has not given them any title but as far as we can understand 
देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ पीपल हुआ बींग डिस्कस्ड हियर जनरली पीपल थिंक दैट दे आर ओनली मुनाफिकीन दिपोक्राइट्स बट एक्चुअली हिपोक्राइट्स एज वेल एज द ज्यूज ऑफ मदीना बोथ आर इंक्लूडेड इन दिस तरीक इन दिस कैटेगरी एंड एक्चुअली हिपोक्राइट्स फॉर ऑल्सो पीपल अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द ज्यूज ऑफ मदीना दे वर अंडर देयर इन्फ्लुएंस एंड दे वर द शयातीन पीपल एट विच वी शेल वेरी प्रेजेंटली रीड इन इन दिस आयात ऑल्सो द वर्ड मैदा खलाओ इला शयातीन हिम कालो इन्ना महाकुम इन नमा नहन मुस्ताफ दे सो एक्चुअली दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन एज यू से इन इंग्लिश फ्री टू होम इट फिट्स दिस इज ए नरेशन एंड इट फिट्स टू ग्रुप्स ऑफ पीपल ऑफ दैट टाइम नंबर वन द ज्यूज नंबर टू द मुनाफिकून द हिपोक्राइट्स हु सेट दे वर मुस्लिम एंड बट दे वर नॉट मुस्लिम दे वर नॉट मोमिन्स वाई ज्यूज बिकॉज हियर यू फाइंड यकूल आमन्ना बिल्लाह व बिल्योमिल आखिर नॉट बिल रसूल हियर द वर्डिंग्स आर ओनली दैट दे से वे बिलीव इन अल्लाह एंड बिलीव इन हियर आफ्टर बट नॉट इन द रसूल वी डोंट बिलीव इन द मैसेंजर एटलीस्ट दिस इज नॉट दे आर सेइंग एंड दैट वॉज द पोजिशन ऑफ द ज्यूज बिकॉज यू बिलीव इन अल्लाह and you you also believe in allah we also believe in allah you also believe in unity of allah we also believe in unity of allah you also believe in the resurrection we also believe in the resurrection you also believe in the in the hereafter in the heaven and hell we also believe in the hereafter and the hell and the heaven so we are also mu'mins you must accept us as believers that was their claim and it's very noteworthy that out of the three basic imaniyat three basic themes of iman only two have been mentioned wa min an-nas man yaqulu amanna billah wa bil yawmil akhir wa ma hum bi'mu'minin they are not mu'mins and in the same way and when we shall read the description this is this fits you know the munafiqoon of madina also because they also actually they doubted about the messengership of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find in the quran at different places that they said for example why this this war have been started battles have been started there's no express injunction in the quran laula nuzilat suratun why not a surah has been has been revealed in the quran and only on this demand of theirs we find that suratul qital was revealed surah to muhammad or suratul qital in the 26th part which contains a very express injunction for going to war against the kuffar so actually they were not very sure about the messengership or prophethood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were also also they, they their claim was iman billah iman bil akhir actually they took muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not very seriously and to obey muhammad personally that had become most difficult for them so these both groups are included here if you keep in view the tawilul khas the groups who are in the background of these ayat but when we shall infer generally this will fit every munafiq for all times to come because as a rule please understand whenever there is some ideological call when there is some revolutionary movement started based on some ideology you will always find three types of people there are people who accept the ideology at its face value and then they are ready to die for it live for it to do whatever it demands then there are people who are opposed to that ideology they oppose it clearly openly to the nail and then there is the third group always who want to support the ideology but keep safe themselves they want to play safe they want they don't want to sacrifice their their belongings or their lives they want to be safe and you know to be to keep their money with them and everything you say they, they they don't want to take risks and they actually they want to do something good but it should happen itself not that we have to do anything for it and we have to sacrifice anything for it so these are the munafiqoon the third type of people who will always be found with every ideological movement every revolutionary movement people who believe it take it at its face value they plunge into deep waters risking everything people who refuse to accept and who oppose it to the nail clearly and people who are in between la ilaha illallah wa la ilaha illallah 
They are neither on that side, neither on this side. They are somewhat on this side, somewhat on that side. Meaning thereby, neither on their side, neither on this side. So these are the munafiqun, and this is the third group which is being discussed here. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are not believers, they are not the real moments. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They try to, think, to deceive. يُخَادِعُونَ I've added the word try. They are trying to deceive Allah and the people who believe, the real believers. مُخَادَعَ This is Baba Mufala. This is trying against each other. So yukhadi'oon Allah, yukhadi'oon Allah wa al-lazeena amanu. They are trying to deceive Allah and people who believe, the Mormons. Wa ma yakhda'oona illa anfusahum. And they are not deceiving anybody except themselves. They are deceiving themselves. When they claim they are Mormons, they are deceiving themselves. When they think that they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this verbal attestation only, well they are wrong. They are deceiving themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they perceive it not. They have not the sense that they are deceiving themselves. وَلَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ بَرَضٌ In their hearts, there is a disease. There is an ailment. That ailment is of doubt. Shak, rab, doubt. And this is actually, this shak and rab, then it goes to develop into nifaq, into hypocrisy. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ بَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased them in their disease. This is the rule of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take to the right path, He will help you in proceeding forward on that right path. If you choose the wrong path, He will help you. Go ahead. Further and further. And if you are in between, He will leave you there. It's your own choice. Imma shatiram wa imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the choice to you, to me, to every human being. When the decision he makes, Allah makes that way easy for him to proceed further and further. All the difficulties of the right path, they are made easier for him. All the big evils of the wrong path, for those people who choose to, to take, take that wrong path for themselves, then they are made easy for him when they go after one big evil to the another bigger evil, and then to the still bigger evil, they go forward. So actually this is the habit of Allah. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ بَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah has increased them in their disease. وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ And there, for them is a very painful torment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ On the basis of, because of the lie that they had been telling. Because they were saying we are Mormons, they were not Mormons. This was the, the lie that they were saying, they were telling. لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسَدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Now it's very important. This third category of people, as I told you, one type of people who accept that dawa, that call, that ideology, and then they plunge into deep waters, risking everything. Other one, they have rejected the ideology, Rather, they have decided to oppose it, and they are opposing it to and nail. And then this third group is in between. They want to make peace between evil and good, between batil and haq. They want to make peace between them. Because if there is a clash between the batil and the haq, between the truth and the falsehood, if there is a clash, there is going to be bloodshed, there is going to be loss of life, loss of property, loss of conveniences, everything. So actually they want peace, not for the sake of their truth, but for themselves, to save themselves. That is why they used, they wanted to say, that why are we going to war? It's no use going to war against Kuffar. Why not go on preaching and preaching and teaching and teaching? Well, we can, we can preach Islam. We can teach Islam to the people. Why Muhammad Wasallam has taken this way? He is sending, he started sending small groups of armies, small groups, obstructing the way of the caravans, of the Quraysh. What for? Why? This will lead to bloodshed. This will lead to war, to battles. We don't, we shouldn't do it. We should make peace. Now you, this, this, this character, you must read between the lines. 
وَإِذَاقِيلَلَّهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ When it is said to them, don't make mischief on the earth. They say, oh no, we are the peacemakers. What was the mischief? Muslims, the true Muslim said to them, if you have accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the messenger of Allah, if you accepted Islam, then be true Muslims. Now obey him in every respect. When you have accepted him, now you have to obey him. Why you know this difference of opinion? This is actually mischief. This is fasad. La tu sadu filar. There is a party. You are breaking the discipline of the party. This party must be disciplined. Muliyanu marsus. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-lazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan kandahum muliyanu marsus. You should be like, you know, a fortified wall. Not your, not different people, individuals, you know. So this group should be very much integrated. And why are you making this facade? And they, the reply was, Qalu innama nahnu muslihoon. No, we want to make peace. Muhammad wants to make war, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we want to obstruct this war mongering. We want to have peace. Allah innahum humul muslihoon. Now this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, they are the mischief mongers. وَلَاكِ اللَّا يَشْعُرُونَ But they don't have the perception, they perceive not. But they are the mischief mongers. Why? Because actually, whenever on this earth, there is some system, which is not the system of deen of Allah. This is fasad. Although there might be all amn, all peace, apparent peace, but actually when this is not the law of Allah which is governing this place, it is in rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is fasad. Zahar al-fasadu fil barre wal bahar. Bima kasabat ya din nas. This is fasad. This is rebellion against the rightful ruler. The rightful owner of this universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only rightful ruler. And if anybody else, any other law is ruling, it is rebellion. So this rebellion has to be set under. It has to be controlled. It has to be dealt with. And for dealing with this rebellion, putting it down, you need a party, strong party, powerful party, disciplined party. Now if you are, if you are giving, making injuries to the discipline of that party, you are weakening that party, you are, you are abetting this system actually, this facade. So Quran says, Allah innahum hubul mufsidun. By breaking the discipline of the Muslim party, of Hezbollah, of the party of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are actually, they are the mischief mongers, they are abetting and supporting this facade on earth. Ala innahum humul mufsidun wa lakin la yashurun. Wa idha qila lahum aminu kama aman nas. And when it is said to them, you should also believe, just as the others have believed, you look to Abu Bakr, look to Umar, look to Saad ibn Ma'az, look to Saad ibn Ibadah, razi Allah ta'ala anu wa jima'in. They are the believers. Why don't you follow them? Why don't you take to their examples? What did they say? Very interesting. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُومِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَحَا They said, should we believe just as these fools are believing? They thought they are fools. They are fanatics. They are risking everything. These are fools who have left their homes and hearts and they have come over from Mecca to Medina. Are they, are they, you know, wise people? They don't look to whatever is injurious to them, whatever is harmful to them, whatever is beneficial for them. They have just migrated from Mecca, leaving their families, their home, not only their homes and hearts, their families at the mercy of the wolves of Mecca. They have come over here. So they are fools. Actually, we are not fools like them. We are not going to risk our lives and properties and our wealth we are not going to, that, to take that part. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمَنُوا كَمَا آمَنَا السُّفَحَا آمَنُوا كَمَا آمَنَا النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُومِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَا السُّفَحَا أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَحَا وَلَاكِ اللَّا يَعْلَمُونَ Listen to it. Harkan. They are the fools, but they don't have the perception. They don't have the knowledge. Abu Bakr is not a fool. Umar is not a fool. And Saad ibn Ibadah and Saad ibn Maaz, they are not fools. These are fools. Ubay, Abdullah ibn Ubay is the biggest fool of Medina. 
and the people who are like him people who are obeying him people who are taking his part they are the fools because actually they don't know what is really good and beneficial for them because real life is the life hereafter and this is injurious for them because we read in surah an-nisa innal munafiqina fi darki al-asfal min an-nar these munafiqin will be in the lowest part of hell in the lowest section of hell they will be placed so actually they are fools wa idha laqul ladina amanu qalu amanna and when they meet the people who believe really believe they say we also believe wa idha khalau ila shayatinihim now this is a word please note when they are in privacy with their devils with their chiefs well these are the chiefs the, the jews of madina the munafiqin were actually they were in close liaison with the jews of madina wa idha khalau ila shayatinihim qalu inna ma'akum they are the same we are with you don't think although we have openly declared ourselves to be muslims to be with the muslims to be with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this is also we are making mockery of them we are with you really we are with, we have not left your side we are with you wa idha laqul ladina amanu qalu amanna wa idha khalau ila shayatinihim qalu inna ma'akum inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un we are only mocking we are these fools you know these moments they are fools and when you are making a laughing stock for them allah yastahzi'u bihim now this is the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah mocks at them wa yamudduhum fi tughyanihim again the same divine habit or divine rule or the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whichever path you take allah makes it easy for you wa yamudduhum fi tughyanihim ya mahul allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them increase in their wrong doings permits them going more and more in the direction of that evil and wrong path that they have taken and decided and chosen for themselves ulaik alladhina ashtaraw ulaik alladhina ashtaraw dalalat bil huda they are the people who have purchased error falsehood in exchange for guidance very beautiful words now guidance of the quran came to them now they have two options either accept the guidance of the quran or the opposite of it that's the falsehood that is batil that is error that is sin that is disobedience to allah actually now they have given away the guidance of quran guidance of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and taken for themselves accepting for themselves they have exchanged the guidance for zalala for the error the falsehood fama rabihat tijaratuhum and this trade of theirs it has not benefited them at all this is the the sort of tafsira from allah subhanahu wa taala a commentary from allah subhanahu wa taala ulaika alladhina ashtaru dalalata bil huda fama rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadin and they are not going to reach the destiny they cannot have now the guidance because they have gone very far on this path of nifaq and munafiqah masaluhum ka masal alladhi istawqada nara now there are two similes here and there are two opinions one opinion is that the both these similes are regarding this third category the in between people neither this side nor this side la ilaha illa wa la ilaha illa muzabzabina baina zalik neither the believers nor opposing apparently or openly in between and the both the you know parables of both this these uh, similitudes they are about these very people some are very deep in this quality of of uh, hypocrisy and some are shallow but the opinion which i hold and i agree with the people who think that way that is that the first simile is for the kuffar and the second simile is for the munafiqin for the kuffar we read these ayat inna alladhina kafaru sawaun alayhi ma anzartahum am lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim rishawa wa lahum adhabun azim for them now there is a misal a similitude a similitude 
مسل ہوم کا مسل takes the courage gather some timber and then you know kindle the fire now they can see where they are they were about where are we but at this moment something happens to a group of people that their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness before that fire there was darkness outside although their own sights were intact but now the mahol the environment the surroundings are enlightened but their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness this is the position of those actually muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kindled the fire and light of hidayah but there were certain peoples who out of jealousy out of their haughtiness they didn't like to see the light of the day so actually their their sight was was taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now they are groping in the darkness summun bukmun umyun fahum la yarjiun this is the likeness of the people of the second group in the ladina kafaru sabaun alayhim anzartahum wa lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam Allah ala qulubihim wa ala samihim wa ala afsarihim bishawa wa lahum azabun azim masalahum ka masal alladhi istawqada nara their likeness is to the likeness of a one person who kindled a fire فَلَمَّا أَغَاتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ And when it lighted all around him, ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah took away their sights. وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ اللَّا يُبْسِرُونَ And now left them in the darknesses, they cannot see anything. سُمْمٌ بُكْمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ They are deaf, they are dumb, they are blind, and they are not going to return. they cannot return don't hope o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or you o muslims that any one of them will ever return to the path of allah because now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away their sights khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sami wa ala tarin bishawa so i think that this simile is for that group and for the munafiqin of second simile aw kasayyib min as sama or the similitude of a rain storm three has zulumatun wa radu wa barq there is a rain storm from the stra- from the sky wherein there is darkness and thunder and lightning yaj'aluna asabi'ahum fi azanihim min as-sawa'iq hadar al-mawt they are putting their fingers in their ears saving themselves from death due to the stunning thunder clap they think that this sound will take the is their hearing away and then maybe they die out of it qasayyib min as-sama'i fi dhulumatun wa radu wa barq yajaluna asabihum fi adhanihim min as-sama'i hadar al-mawt wallahu muhitun bil kafirin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already encompassed and encircled these kuffar where when where where can they go they are within the grip of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can cannot go anywhere they cannot run away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqadu al-barq wa yakhtafu absarahum the lightning almost is near to snatch their sights kullama adalahum mashawfi whenever there is some light they can see something the lightning lightning for a time for a moment they have seen the environment they start going in the direction mashawfi they they walk a few steps wa iza azlama alayhim qamu and when there is darkness upon them they stand walaw sha allah la zahaba bi sam'ihim wa absarihim absarihim and had allah decided or decreed he would have taken away from them their sight and hearing both inna allah ala kulli shay'in qadeer verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful he has all authority he can do anything he likes now just 
have some thought about this simile. You know, whenever there is some revolutionary dava, revolutionary movement, there are difficulties. You are called to do your duties in face of difficulties and risks. There are risks of life, risks of wealth. Now you you may be you, you may have to suffer and you may have to give up your careers. You may have to give up and wind up your businesses. Because that is that has been the requirement of every revolutionary struggle. Now these people who are in between, they are belonging to the category who want to do something but without any harm to themselves. They don't want to take any risk to their life, their wealth, their property and so on. So what happens? Whenever during the movement there, are, there comes a time when there is no immediate risk, there is no call to go to war, for example, during the Madani period, whenever there was a call to go to war for any battle, then they were, you know, in a very big trouble. How to save themselves, what, you know, how to apologize, how to get leave from that. But whenever there is all the conditions are normal, nothing very risky affair, then they can, you know, walk with the Muslims. We are also Muslims. And they, they join the Muslims in congregations. They talk loudly about their Islam and Iman. They, take, they make tall claims about their sincerity. But when there is a, a difficult time, time of trial and tribulation, then you know they go down and their courage is gone. So that is the condition portrayed in this similitude. That whenever there is some light, they see something, they can go, they, they take a few steps, they go ahead. But then again when there is darkness, there is again difficulty, there is again risk for life or property or wealth, they again stand and they don't move. So this is the condition of those people about whom the description we have already seen. They are from among peoples who claim that they are Mormons. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they believe in the life hereafter, in the, in the day of judgment. But actually they don't believe. It's a superficial claim that they are making. It's only a verbal attestation that they are doing. Or they are making a total false claim, they are like the Jews. So this description fits both of them. And they were in close association with each other. Actually, this munafiqat and, you know, munafiqeen, they were like an undergrowth. You know, there are big trees, tall trees. Under those big trees, there is the undergrowth, which we call bushes. So these munafiqeen were like the undergrowth of the Jews. They were the established people, three established tribes. They were very influential. They were very wealthy. They were, you know, educated people. They had the book, they had the law, they had the, they had Torah, they had people, learned people within them. So actually this Munafiqeen, this third category was an undergrowth under, under that Jews. And this is the description of this character. And when we generalize it, always with every revolutionary call and movement, you will find three types of people. People who accept the call at its face value. And then they die for it, they live for it. They take every risk for it. They are ready to sacrifice their all belongings, even their lives. People who are opposed to it, tooth and nail, openly. Because they are the people whose vested interests are threatened by the revolutionary party or the revolutionary dawah. They oppose it tooth and nail. And there is always a third group which likes that something good should happen. But they are not ready to sacrifice anything for that. They want to play safe, to keep safe. There is a very important and very beautiful similitude in Surah Al-Hajj also. I told you Surah Al-Hajj, you know, that is in between Makki and Madani Surahs. In Surah Al-Hajj there is an ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ There are from among people who want to worship Allah, but keeping, them, keeping themselves on the sides. They don't want to plunge the main current. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَسَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اِتْمَانَّ بِهِ If there is khair, 
if there is safety, if there is, you know, all the sureties and everything is okay, it manna bihi, he is also satisfied. He is also going along with the Mu'mineen. وَإِنَ سَابَتُ فِتْنَةُ لِنْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ And whenever there is some trial, tribulation, when there is a period of testing, when there is a call for sacrifice, for spending for the cause of Allah, a call for going to the battlefield for the cause of Allah, انْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ They fall down on their faces, fall down on the ground on their faces. خَسَرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ this is actually the real loss, loss of this world also, and real loss of the Akhirah. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ And this is the real loss, this is the real danger to which a man is putting himself. So that is actually the description of this, and I think the time is also over. No, oh, two minutes. Let us proceed to the first ayah of the third section. يا أيها الناس عبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Instead of giving you the translation, let me give you the introduction to the third and fourth sections. These two sections of this surah, as I told you in the beginning, they give you a gist and a summary of number one, the call of Quran. What's the call of Quran? Number one. And number two, the basic philosophy of Qur'an. All these subjects have been discussed in detail in the Makki surahs. But you know, as I told you, that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a Madani surah in the very beginning of the Mus'haf, the gist and summary of that Makki Qur'an is given here in two sections. Very important. What's the basic call of Qur'an? That we will find in the third section, third ruku. What's the basic philosophy of Qur'an? What's the position of man in this universe? On what basis that position has been given to him? And what is the struggle of between evil and good that is going on throughout the history? The struggle within a man, within the personality. There is a struggle always going on within our personalities between good and evil. Something is taking us towards evil and something wants to take us towards good, towards virtue. This is a struggle. A war is going on in the inner, you know, battlefield of our personalities. And then there is a war going on on the outside world. There is the philosophy of history of Quran that this is a struggle between the forces of evil and forces of virtue and good. There is the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side and the forces of shaitan on the other side. Dunya ko hai phir maar ka hai ruho badan pesh. Iblis ne phir apne darindho ko ubhara. اللہ کو پابر دیئے مومن پہ بھروسہ ابلیس کو یورپ کی مشینوں کا سہارا تو that struggle is going on ستیزہ کار رہا ہے ازل سے تائم روز چراغ مصطفیوی سے شرار ابو لہبی that struggle has been going on but what is the basis of that struggle that will be discussed in the fourth section انشاءاللہ and that those two sections انشاءاللہ we shall study in the next session بارک اللہ علی و لکم فی القرآن العظیم و نفانی و ایاکم بالآیات و ذکر حکیم